if God was that way and just give us absolutely every single thing we've ever asked for, we would grow up to be spiritual brats. Right. And nobody would want to be us. We would never become the salt and light of the earth. I'm still talking about three days. Everybody say three days. Three days. It's easy to be a Christian when God is drowning the Egyptians in the Red Sea. They sang, the Bible says, they sang the song of Moses, and then Miriam sings her song. The children of Israel, when they came to this first issue, when they faced this first struggle, they came to the waters that are bitter, and they cry out to Moses. Why did they cry out to Moses? Because the Bible said Moses had a song. They cry out to Moses because Moses had a song. The second thing, the first thing that God is trying to develop in us is consistency. The second thing, put this up, that God wants to develop in our lives is a song of your own. The children of Israel, the reason why they complain is because they were trying to sing Moses' song. When they, began, when they came up to the first thing, they're singing their leader's song. Three days, they're jumping and singing. And as soon as the first difficulty, the first issue, the first struggle, they go to the person's song that they're singing, and they're complaining, what? What? Moses, what? <laughs> Moses then, because he had the song, he did not say, I don't know. I don't know. He did not do that. The Bible says that he turns and he begins to pray to God. Why? Because he had a song. Why was having a song in your heart so important? Because if you go back to the beginning of the chapter, of chapter 15, look what it says. And I will sing to the Lord. He has triumphed gloriously. The horse and its rider has, has been thrown into the sea. Look at verse 2. The Lord is my strength and my song. Why didn't Moses complain when he hit the first issue? Because he had a song in his heart that was just between him and God. And when you have a song in your heart that is not your pastors, it's not your board members, it's not your husband or your wives, it's just you and God's, there comes strength in that. You understand, Pastor Tim and I have been there 20 years. And there's certain songs that every once in a while we'll, we'll just hear, that's our song. You can't have it because it means something to us. <laughs> you understand that we're at the age now that he tells me things and I forget it. I tell him things and we forget it. But we don't forget when the song comes on. Why? Because it's personal. Right. You know what it does? It brings back memories. You remember when? And we start reminiscing. Why? Because it's something that's between us. You understand that we can we can be watching TV and a movie that we seen when we very first got married 20 years ago. They'll show a preview on on the the, the Truman Channel. What is it called? The TCM Channel, the black and white channel. You know, 20 years ago they didn't have digital cable and all that mess. A, a movie a flip on and we'll be like, that was the first movie we seen when we was married. You remember when, when is it? You understand? <laughs> now we fall asleep when we're watching movies. <laughs> <laughs> Neither one of us ever hardly get to the end of the movie. I remember the first 15 minutes of that movie. <laughs> something different though 20 years ago. He can tell me something 10 minutes ago and if I get busy enough, I can forget it like that. But 20 years ago, because it meant something to us, it brings back something in my mind. And when Moses, when he received the waters of bitterness, he didn't have to whine and bellyache. You know why? Because he had a song in his heart that brought strength. And that's where consistency comes from. God, I'm going to praise you when you're drowning my enemies. But God, I'm also going to praise yes. you when yes. I'm facing bitter waters. God, I'm going to praise you when somebody donates $20,000 into the ministry. But God, I'm also going to praise you when it looks like we're going to go under. Why? I don't praise you for what you are doing for me. I praise you because you have brought me out of salvation and you have brought me into your kingdom. And now I am going through the process of being formed for what you have created for me. He drew strength from his song. Because it was a song just between him and God. That's right. And so it brought him joy. And it brought him strength. you got to have God. And you have to have a song. You know that there are certain songs that I sing. And if I'm having a bad day, I just start.
are singing that song. And there's something about that song. It's not just the words of it. It's not whether it's a new or old song. Most of the songs that I sing that, that just come popping into my head are pretty, pretty old songs. Like good 15 year old song, but I just begin to worship with them. Why? Right. Because it's a song that I got between me and God, and it brings strength into me. And so the Bible, is, it, one of the things that we need to glean from this is we need to have a, God wants to develop consistency. Everybody can say consistency. consistency. He's trying to develop consistency in your life. The next thing he's trying to get you to do is develop a song in your heart. Because it's that song that's going to bring strength. Look what it says in Isaiah 54, verse 1. Sing, O barren, you who have not born. Break forth into singing and cry aloud, you who have not labored with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married woman. Isaiah is trying to get them to understand that if you would but sing, quit worrying and complaining about the barrenness and just begin to sing. When you sing to the Lord, guess what? That's when things begin to change because God said, I inhabit the praises of my people. And if he inhabits, it means he comes out of his time into my time and barrenness cannot stay when God is in the place. So he says, sing, O barren one. Sing. Why? Because that's how you get God into your time. And you draw strength from that. The Hebrew word, for those who maybe haven't been around church very much, let me show you this. The Hebrew word for praise is Judah. And you'll find that every time the children of Israel went into battle, every time they went into war against another nation, they always sent the tribe of Judah first, which means praise. Before they ever lifted a weapon of war, they sent the praisers and the musicians first. Right. Musicians, that's, that's why right. it's important that you come in ready to go. You don't come in with a fight. You come in with a song. Huh? Because if we come in with a song, then those that are been equipped to war can come up behind. They never sent the warring soldiers first. They right. sent the worshipers and the praisers. And as the praisers and the worshipers marched, then those with the warriors came behind and they just started slowly. Yes, amen. That's true. Amen. So they sent the worshipers first. You got to get a song inside of you. You can't just sing Moses' song, and you can't just sing Miriam's song. You right. have to make it a song that's yours so right. that you can draw strength in the battle. Amen. Understand this. The strength of your Christianity is in two things. It's in your faith, and it's in your song. Yeah. The strength of your Christianity, it's in your faith, and it's in your song. And God inhabits the praises. See, our culture these days, and this generation, I speak it as a whole as a whole, not divided into two, as a whole, we have the wrong mindset. Our mindset, we have been taught to be religious. And our mindset is, when God does something worth praising, then I'll praise. Right. That's the way we've been taught as a culture. Right. If I'm having a bad day, then God ain't doing nothing worthy of my praise, then I'm not gonna praise. If I run into bitter water, I'm, not, I'm just gonna complain. Three days ago, I was having church, I was enjoying right. the dance, that's fine, but what about now? God, what have you done for me lately? Right. That's been our mindset. But it's been backwards and it's been wrong. Praise him in the success and in the abundance. God's trying to take our church to yet another level, but you can't praise him when miracles are happening. We, have to, we can only praise him when miracles are happening and something's wrong. Right. If we can only praise him when good things are happening, then something's wrong. We can't just wait for a miracle. We can't say, God, perform a miracle for us and we will praise you. Right. You understand that that's what, the, that's what the Philistines did to Samson. Samson, we're going to bring you in and you perform for us. And he said, mm, the Holy Ghost don't work that way. Holy Ghost, if you come and, and you put that person out of the wheelchair, then I'll worship. No, you better worship before. You worship before and then every person in a wheelchair will come out. 